Hi, Bobcats. In this video, we're going to take a look at something called heating and cooling curves. Our objectives are to identify the states of matter that are present on each part of a heating or cooling curve, and also to explain why the temperature doesn't change during a phase transition. This particular diagram is known as a heating curve. If we were to turn it around and um, go from low to, or go from high temperature to low temperature, we would call it a cooling curve instead. Now, as we look at the axes here, this vertical axis is showing us the temperature. And so as we move higher on the, the vertical axis, we're looking at higher temperatures. And then this horizontal axis is known as increasing energy content of sample, which um, they're, they're trying to get around the issue of how extra energy is being dumped into the sample. So just for simplicity's sake, you can imagine that the sample has been placed on something like a hot plate. And then this horizontal axis basically becomes time because as more time passes, the hot plate is putting more energy into the sample. And so just think of this as being time uh, heated. All right, then um, the sample is going to start at the lowest temperatures as a solid. And that's what's being illustrated here. And it's showing the arrangement of the particles in the solid. And so that's starting down here in this lowest portion of the curve. And then as time goes by, the solid warms up until we hit the special temperature that's known as the melting point. And then something very strange happens. Even though we are adding more heat to the sample, the temperature is not changing. It remains fixed at a temperature we call the melting point. And then as eventually the temperature starts rising again. When that happens, all of the solid has been turned into a liquid and the temperature rise is happening now as the liquid warms. Then that, that temperature rise continues taking place up until we hit a temperature that's known as the boiling point. And at the boiling point, once again, we hit this constant temperature where we're adding heat and every bit of that added heat goes into the phase transition. It goes into changing the uh, liquid into a gas. So all of that extra energy is going into separating the particles from one another and giving them enough kinetic energy to turn into a gas. Eventually, we've added enough heat that all of that um, sample has turned from a liquid into a gas, and then the temperature of that gas begins rising as we continue to add more heat to it. I want to focus for just a moment on the fact that when we are at the uh, boiling point and when we're at the melting point, the temperature doesn't change. The fancy word for the temperature not changing is the title up here, isothermal. Iso is a prefix that means same, and thermal refers to temperature, so it's saying same temperature or constant temperature. And phase changes, in other words, a solid turning to liquid, liquid turning to gas, happen at constant temperature. Um, the reason for that is that all of that energy that's being added at that temperature goes into changing the state of matter. So if we're talking melting, it's going into getting the particles to move from their highly ordered state as a solid um, and then to start moving more uh, but still stay close to one another in the liquid state. Or if we're talking about the temperature being the boiling point, it's allowing that that added energy is separating the particles from one another as the liquid transitions to being a gas. Please take a moment now and pause this video and jump over to this other video that shows a model of water turning into ice. There's some really neat features in this video. Um, for one thing, you can see very clearly the difference in movement between liquid water and solid water or ice. 
And another thing that it does very nicely is that the ice is forming on top of water, which is a strange thing. Most substances have solid states that are more dense than liquid states, but not so in for water. And you can see this very clearly because as the, the ice forms, you can see these hexagonal cavities between the water molecules that will form that make the density of ice be less than the density of liquid water. You can see clearly from the model that there are fewer particles in any given volume for the ice phase. And then in the, the liquid water phase, the particles are much more close to each or much closer to each other, which gives it a greater density and makes the liquid sink to the bottom and the ice float on top. So our objectives here were to identify the state of matter present in um, each portion of a heating or cooling curve and to explain why the temperature doesn't change. Uh, that's because, or, I'm sorry, why the temperature doesn't change during a phase transition, which is because all of the added energy is going into the phase transition instead of making the sample hotter. Um, I realized as I got to this last slide, I never showed you what a cooling curve looks like. So the curves that we saw earlier in this video were heating curves where we have temperature on this axis and heat added on the horizontal axis. And the curves looked something like this. Now on a quiz or a test, I might give you a curve that looks pretty much just like what I sketched out, although hopefully a little prettier. And on that curve, I would expect you to be able to fill in what states of matter are present. So for instance, down here on this lowest portion, I'd expect you to recognize that's a solid. On this intermediate portion, I'd expect you to recognize that that's a liquid. And on this upper portion, I'd expect you to recognize that that's a gas. And those are what we call our single phase regions. There's just one state of matter present. But then on these horizontal plateaus, I'd expect you to recognize that there are two states of matter present. For instance, on this lower one where melting is taking place, we have a solid transitioning into a liquid. Or on this upper one where boiling is taking place, we have a liquid transitioning into a gas. So there are actually two states of matter present on the horizontal regions, and there are there will be just one state of matter present on the, the slanted regions. So that first curve that I just drew was a, a heating curve. To turn that into a cooling curve, we would simply start at high temperature and drop down to low temperature, and so the curve shape reverses. We'll have the solid, I'm sorry, we'll have the gas cooling, and then the gas cools um, and transitions into a liquid. Then that liquid starts to cool, and then it hits the melting point and at the, or the freezing point, and at the freezing point, the liquid turns into a solid, and then eventually the solid um, starts dropping in temperature. And the phases are simply reversed. The lowest um, temperature phase is the solid, the intermediate temperature phase is a liquid, and the highest temperature phase is the gas. And so on this uh, first horizontal plateau, we have a gas turning into a liquid or condensation. And on the second horizontal plateau, we have a liquid turning into a solid or freezing. Eat them up, cats.